So, good, good evening uh, to our speaker, Professor Ostisika Otani. Uh, good afternoon, friends in other parts of Asia. Uh, good morning to friends in Europe and other places. So, it's really my great pleasure to welcome Professor Otani, uh, who probably does not need any formal introduction to this community. Uh, but just for the sake of some young students uh, who may be in the audience who may not know Professor Otani, uh, I just take the pleasure to uh, give a formal introduction about him. Uh, so Professor Otani received the BS, MS and PhD degrees from Kaio University in Japan in 1984, 86 and 89 respectively. He was a research fellow at the physics department of Trinity College in Dublin in Ireland and a researcher at the laboratory of Louis Nell at CNRS in France uh, between 1989 to 1992. Then he was an assistant professor at the Department of Physics at Kaio University uh, um, in, in Japan. And then an associate professor at the Department of Material Science at Tohoku University from 1995 to 2002. And from 2001 to 2004, he led the quantum nanoscale magnetic research team at the RIKEN, where he's currently working, the RIKEN Frontier Research System FRS as a team leader. In 2004, he became a full professor at the Institute for Solid State Physics, that is ISSP, uh, the University of Tokyo. Since 2004, he has additionally been the leader of the quantum nanoscale magnetic research team at the Riken Center for Emergent Material Science, that's known as SEMS. Professor Otani has published over 300 technical papers, outstanding articles, I would say, in peer reviewed journals. Uh, he has an impressive age index of 65, as per Google Scholar. He has written many book chapters, review articles, and given, I think he has a very modest hundred, maybe hundreds of uh, talks at different conferences. And always it's a uh, pleasure and uh, you know fun to watch his lectures, really nice. He has been coordinating the Nanospin Conversion Science Project supported by the Japanese Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology since 2014 to elucidate the interconversion mechanism among phonons, photons, magnons, and electrons. He received the commendation for science and technology by the Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology Research category in 2020. So many congratulations for this very nice award. He has been a committee member of Commission of Magnetism uh, in the category C9 of the International Union for Pure and Applied Physics uh, between 2011 to 2018 and a vice chair since 2018. So it's my great pleasure on behalf of my team, uh, Dr. Prajbu Singh, Mr. Pushpendra, Shakti, Ajar, and others. I again thank you very much for uh, agreeing to uh, kindly give a lecture in this WTS seminar. This is the 74th seminar. It is all possible because, uh, because of speakers like you who have been very kind in supporting us uh, in making this seminar series a very successful one. And also thanks to all the participants who are very Patient and very proactive in discussing, joining, interacting. I just like to mention that during the lecture, we don't take any questions. So if you have any question, you can kindly write in the chat box or raise a hand or just say I have a question. In case you have a microphone issue, you can just write the question. I will read it for you at the end of the lecture. So after the lecture ends, first we will take a group photo. So I would request all of you to switch on your camera for 30 seconds. And then we will come back to the question answer session and then we'll present the memento and we end. So with this brief note, I again, thank you all for joining. Thank you so much, Professor Otani, for your kindness to agree to be part of this WPS seminar series. So it's all over to you and uh, you can now share your screen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sabanka. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Can yes. you see my screen? Yes, I see. Okay, the... so the, uh, I'll start my talk. Um, Professor Otani, I think I see your probably second screen, which is the Zoom window. Uh, some oh, Zoom I see. Window okay, then, then I have to just stop the, you see, I change. Um, I'm sorry. So the, no is this, does, is yes. it working? Yes, here we go. Thank you so much. Yes. Very You're much. welcome. Thank you very much, Sabanka for a nice introduction. I'm very privileged to give a talk here. And then I'd like to talk today the functional topological antiferromagnet. So as he, <laughs> my name is Chika Otani, 
and that I'm representing the Institute for Solid State Physics, the University of Tokyo, and also a quantum nanomagnetism research team at SEMS Riken in Japan. So I would like to just go on. Excuse me. So screen is Oh, okay, so then, then I'd like to just first introduce my collaborators. My talk is uh, twofold. First part is something to do with uh, magnetic spin hole effect. And the second part that I'd like to talk about antiferromagnetic domain wall dynamics and also domain, domain structures. And then this is uh, my collaborators I and mean, in IML talk University now, and also um, Indian guy, Prasanta Muduri, and myself, and also uh, Dr. Kondo in Riken, uh, my team in Riken, and also all these other people then from University of Tokyo, Professor Nakatsuji's group, and also from US. At that time, then he, uh, for Chen, he's now a professor in Colorado State University, and also Alan McDonald's, and they, they helped a lot to understand the behavior theoretically. And also on this subject, uh, Dr. Sugimoto, who is, used to be my student, who is uh, now in NIMS as a researcher, and also then my ex-assistant professor, and also again the Kondo from Riken group, and myself, and also Professor Nakatsuji's group, and also the um, Professor Nakatani from University of Electrocommunications in Japan, and also again Tatara's group in Riken, and also Professor Arita's group in University of Tokyo. And all these papers are related to my talk. If you are interested in, please visit uh, these papers in which appeared in Nature and also Communication Physics. And also then I'd like to just tell you more and publish data today. Okay, this is outline of my talk. I start with the introduction, followed by two topics, as I said, and then summarize my talk. Introduction, um, I'd like to just say, uh, as, as was introduced in the, my uh, bio sketch, I was leading the inter, uh, national project in which we studied intensively spin conversion. The idea is all these physical entities, for example, heat, vibration, sound, all these things and act as a kind of uh, isotropic, uh, uh, isotropic agitation. Among these, these kind of things that can be converted to electricity, in, interconversion takes place between these two. And more interestingly, among this conversion, spin to charge conversion, which you may know as a spin hole effect, is very, very um, effective means to generate spin current nowadays. So that's when we can generate the, from charge current, the spin current orthogonally flowing with respect to the charge current, and which can be used to control, uh, particularly excite spin waves and switch magnetization and dry domain wall dynamics. And also more recently, people working on these communes can be driven by spin current. So that's, and I'd like to just mention uh, what this uh, spin orbit torque and which can be uh, driven by this uh, spin hole material. It is more efficient with respect to the ordinary spin transfer torque um, spin polarizer. And if you look at this STT-based MRAM, and also compare, by comparison with uh, spin orbit torque MRAM, and mostly uh, the spin polarized current is produced by the current injected through the ferromagnet. Therefore, spin polarization is limited by this polarization of the ferromagnet, which is usually less than one. But in the case of spin orbit torque, um, people use a spin, spin, uh, spin hole effect as a spin source, in this case, important thing is um, this theta is uh, called spin hole angle, which is a kind of efficiency to generate spin current from the charge current. This ratio is uh, called the spin hole angle. This ratio is normally then less than one, but more importantly, um, the effective value of this uh, efficiency, always there is a scale with L over T. This large L is uh, this element contact size at this, uh, in this uh, device, and the thickness is uh, this small T. Therefore, L over T sometimes be becomes very large. Therefore, the, this coefficient is 
increases eff efficiency. So then probably there is a possibility to have more than one. So that is, that's why people are working on this SOT MRA very int intensively as a new method to switch or to manipulate magnetization. So then if I look at these uh, trends in spin manipulation and also spin source, so far then lots of people have been working on bulk spin hole effect. And as you know, this is, this is a charge current generate orthogonally flowing spin current and also vice versa, then a spin current can be converted back to charge current as well. So these behaviors and has been studied or investigated in 4D or 5D transition metals with strong spin orbit coupling, such as platinum, tantalum, or tungsten, and by doping copper with iridium or doping copper bismuth, heavy element, which also creates a large efficiency, typically ranging from five to 30% or so. But more recently, people are shifting this method, efficient conversion to the new functionality and also eff higher efficiency. So one of the, you see, the people are just trend is uh, shifting towards the interface and the surface state. Interface means in a rush of interface, if you have inversion symmetries broken and you can expect uh, rush of splitting in the momentum space so that when you pass the current in particular direction, you can expect all the conduction electrons aligned to the one direction. So that then you can just uh, expect spin current diffusively propagate neighboring material. So that then you can manipulate the magnetization direction of the ferromagnet. That is a one way. And also um, there is another activity like using a topological insulator surface states and which exhibit moment, spin momentum locking. That's also the exactly the similar type of spin accumulation takes place at the interface. So that then you can manipulate the magnetization uh, which is sitting or connect contacting uh, very just beside. So, and also the, but the spin manipulation and also this uh, spin hole, spin to charge conversion, charge to spin conversion. So recently antiferromagnet is also uh, playing an important role as well as this uh, spin itself, magnetization inside of antiferromagnet also uh, very interesting how to, con how to control the magnetic state. So that's also an important issue. So I'd like to just summarize the comparison between the uh, ferromagnet and the antiferromagnet. We use ferromagnet because the stray field is large, but the antiferromagnet is very nearly zero. That means we can say this is very good for miniaturization because then we can suppress a crosstalk dipole interaction. And the resonance fre frequency of ferromagnet is about a gigahertz. In the case of antiferromagnet, then which shows because the exchange field is dominating inside, therefore the frequency goes up to telehealth. This means high speed operation can be expected if we use antiferromagnet. And also this uh, variety of materials, and you can even find some room temperature semiconductor in the case of antiferromagnet because there are lots of oxide materials. So there's a variety of materials choice. That was a very different point. But unfortunately, bad news is uh, this coupling with magnetic fields how to control the magnetic state of antiferromagnet. That is very, very difficult, indirect, difficult to control. The what is most important for this controlling magnetic or spin state in the antiferromagnet is this time reversal symmetry. You see, just uh, uh, let's um, discuss time reversal symmetry. If we have paramagnetic power magnet, and the net magnetization is zero. So that in that case, and even we apply the time reversal operation, it's not broken. So that's why it doesn't make any difference between the either up or down magnetic field. However, in the case of ferromagnet, you can see the time reversal symmetry is macroscopically broken. So that means up and down clearly different. That's why then we can see the hysteresis. Antiferromagnet state, okay, if you look at sublattice, Yes, time reverse symmetry is broken microscopically. However, if you look at macroscopically, it's not broken. 
because the net magnetization is zero, compens fully compensated. That is very important. That's why then it's, in fact, it's very difficult to control by applying external field. Functional antiferromagnet, what we are expecting from antiferromagnet. Ferromagnets, as I said, time reversal symmetry is broken. Therefore, then we can have big hysteresis loop in, magnet in terms of magnetization. So that then we can expect a lot of different response. Non-volatility, that means you see the non-volatile and the magnetic state is well defined because of time reversal symmetry is broken. So that then you can expect a spin polarization as well. And also this anomalous analysis effect, which is equivalent to anomalous Hall effect, that's also expected. And also sadly, and because of this result in the magnetic magnet optical, you see, chi effect or Faraday effect. Uh, this uh, really we can image magnetic structure. But it, in general, in the case of antiferromagnet, magnetization is zero. All these response is almost zero. That's why we cannot expect. What we want is functional antiferromagnet, which shows a big response when we apply magnetic field. So that's the effort we expect, we want. But recently breakthrough was shown in antiferromagnetic spintronics. Very famous one is this anomalous magnetic resistance, anisotropic magnetic resistance was found in the case in anti uh, ion rhodium. And if you can just change this nail vector by 90 degrees, then you can see the significant change in the anomal AMR. So this was demonstrated by this, this in this paper, and particularly by applying room temperature and spontaneous. This one is uh, this result, and no stray field because of antiferromagnet. And what you have to do is you have to do heat a field cooling by applying in any particular direction. Then you can align the nail vector orthogonal to the external field when you do field cooling at, from above the name temperature. Okay, in this way, and then you can really write and also read the information by using an isotropy magnetic resistance. More recently, uh, this uh, famous copper manganese arsenide uh, was reported to show the similarly uh, this AMR. And also even interesting is, and if we look at the microscopic crystal structure, there is the inversion symmetry is broken. That's why then when you pass a current in this crystal, the sublattice moment feels the oppositely aligned effective field so that then you can flip or rotate magnet nail vector at will. And then the disc, uh, this group succeeded in the controlling the magnetic nail vector direction at will in this way by applying a pulse current. So this is uh, also then there are a lot of, you see other examples, then probably you can easily find the manganese to gold and also nickel oxide platinum by layers and, the, and so. So I'd like to just mention, as I said, and it's the spin manipulation, and there are a lot of possibility and more in our case, we propose this novel non-collinear ferromagnet, which is, um, classified into biosem metals, which exhibit very peculiar uh, band structure, which also the shows a large, very curvature and also very large response in all these uh, very important uh, magnetic properties. Okay, so that's why I'm just, uh, I go through the same, and then we can have the case of ferromagnet, big response, and ferromagnet, no response, but this chiral antiferromagnet magnetic three tin, or this can be replaced with germanium or other materials, which shows a big response. Novel, this non-volatile memory and spin polarization, and also the some electric devices and the magnet optical chi effect signals. And actually, and this is our results recently we've obtained by MOOC. And then we can see the clearly how domain the, uh, reversal develops as a function of time. So this is uh, uh, enable this material that will give us large spontaneous and also controllable signals at even at room temperature. This is very important for spintronics. 
And then I'd like to show you the crystal structure of this manganese free tin, which con consists of all this layered structure of A, B, and A. This A also it consists of triangular lattice, which just piles up. And if you look at from the top, and you can see this, excuse me, you can see this kind of a, a triangular structure, inverse triangle. And here, and if you apply magnetic field, there is a slight canting, and which shows a very small magnetization of about five millimeter per formula unit. And if you flip the magnetization, and this order rotate like ferromagnet. That means recently, um, Dr. Suzuki and also the Professor Arita's group just uh, proposed this, this is an octopole, octopole ferroic shows and you know, contains a ferroic order uh, which act like a macro spin. So that's, you can understand from symmetry wise, this is exactly like a ferro ferromagnet. So very interesting one, because based on this idea, the, my colleague, uh, Professor Nakatsuji in University of Tokyo, he demonstrated in 2015 that huge and uh, enormous whole effect um, takes place in this material, which matches something like a three microohm centimeter, which matches to the ferromagnet. Okay, and then this corresponds to the direction of this octopole, either up or down, octopole moment. And then if we take this empirical relation equation, uh, which describes an normal solar effect and which gives a B times and also M. And as I said, magnetization is tiny and we've just hooked this value and we can expect only 0.1 micro -ohm centimeter. And we have to have some additional term, which is coming from the berry phase and which is omega. I'd like to just recall you what that means in a very curvature. And this, when you put the magnetic um, spin or electrons inside the magnetic field, you can expect like this is Lorentz force. Okay, this cross arm um, deviates the trajectory. Similarly, the very curvature also, this cross arm creates anomalous velocity and which is the origin of intrinsic anomalous solar effect. So that is uh, what we know from all this theoretical analysis. So then I, this omega is very important. We know the normal solar effect and this expression include um, very curvature, which is origin of large normal solar effect. So that you know, we can just expect exactly the same. Similarly, normal nasty effect also contains this um, very curvature. So that you know, we can expect, and then uh, today I don't, Get into the detail, but the already there are several a uh, lot of reports on the anomalous nearness effect in this material. Okay, so the, the this point, and you know, we know this material is a very functional uh, antiferromagnet, and which shows a big response. And then the most important key features of antiferromagnet spintronics, we can say the macroscopic time reversal symmetry has to be broken. And then in our case, this uh, cluster magnetic octopole plays an important role. In addition to that, in this material, we have large very curvature, uh, which, is, uh, which is generated due to the topological band structure, particularly this type of linear dispersion. There are two Dirac cones, and at this point, Dirac point plays as a, like a magnetic pole, a plus and a minus, and which generate the very curvature related uh, field, fictitious field inside the mo in the momentum space. So that then we can expect on all these uh, different important behaviors, um, properties, wholly anomalous solar effect, anomalous Nellens effect, this um, magneto optical chi effect. And today I'd like to just uh, show you this uh, novel spin hole effect, which we call magnetic spin hole effect. Okay, so then this is the same view graph, and then this bulk spin hole effect 
trend shift towards the interface and the surfaces. Now we introduce this novel type uh, spin hole effect in the system with a broken time reversal symmetry. This is a magnet three T. Okay, then the magnetic spin hole effect. Okay, very, very pedagogical, a simple way to look at the thing because, because of the time reversal symmetry broken. Um, in the case of a spin hole effect, conventional spin hole effect, we pass a current, we can expect this kind of spin accumulation according to the spin hole angle sign. In this case, let's say counterclockwise spin accumulation takes place right at the surface. So then, then if there is a magnetic, another freedom, magnetization in this system, and which also points along the charge current. Okay, and then what we can expect is a kind of torque which pulls the spin accumulation out of the plane so that then you can expect out of plane component in the spin density, which accumulated at the surface region. Of course, there is a torque action and also reaction. Magnetization itself also tried to feel the torque. So that's why then it did this study in, presented in the uh, Nature Nanotechnology report from NIST. And they also the, um, reported magnetization of very thin nickel single layer, which shows the magnetization stands out of plane. So that is a very interesting um, behavior which was found experimentally. Okay, because of that, then we, we saw that we can just expect some spin accumulation at the surface of this material when we pass the current and which may show the broken time reversal symmetry. So that's what we attempted. And very simply, we just uh, put this uh, slab, we employ the FIB, focus ion beam, and then slice down the single crystal sample and orient like this. So that and we can expect an normal soul effect, but we put the align this electrode perfectly perpendicular to the current. And we put only the one side, the ferromagnet, so that and we can detect chemical potential. But this doesn't detect any longitudinal signal. Okay, so as I said. Um, this is also interesting, the cluster magnetic octopole, which breaks the time reversal operation. So that's an which act as like a macroscopic moment. And also then more importantly, with, um, by you see, synchronizing with this type of behavior, wide points location also changes swaps when you just rotate this uh, octopole moment direction. So that is a very characteristic of this material. So what we found in this case is, and we just flip the uh, spin direction by an external field, and then we measured the spin accumulation by passing current. Surprisingly, um, if we just have the some spin accumulation on the surface, uh, we should see this kind of hysteretic behavior then when we flip the octopole direction completely opposite, what will happen is a hysteretic response change the sign. So that means this is exactly the presentation of the uh, spin. You see, the time reversal symmetry was broken, different type of spin hole effect. That means um, the sign of a spin hole angle can be manipulated by modifying, modulating the magnetic uh, antiferromagnetic order on back, uh, this magnet, uh, octopole moment direction. Okay, and then, then to understand this, and we collaborated with uh, Professor Alan McDonald's group, and then, then they uh, described all this um, behavior by considering the reveal equation, that's when it's phase diffusion equation of the wave function. A uh, very interesting thing is uh, the conclusion is the conventional spin hole effect is the intravant contribution. And then the which can be described like this. More importantly, I, I'm sorry, just I forgot to tell you, but in, it's a complicated spin structure. That's why then they don't like um, use a spin current language. Spin hole effect as a, occurs as a linear response of the spin density matrix 
to an electric field. That's why something like this uh, susceptibility um, of this uh, spin density uh, by E, electric field, is very important. What they mean is you know, when you pass a current, the spin, spin density appears in the in the uh, in nearby the surface. That's what they think. So this was uh, a kind of relationship what they uh, expected from their microscopic calculation. And more pictorically, you see spin density, which appears in the vicinity of surface region, can be shown like this. And then it's a very interesting. And when you change this octopole direction, okay, let's represent it by the magnetic field direction. What will happen is the spin density uh, at the nearby surface changes like this. Okay, gradually rotate with respect uh, as you rotate the magnetic field direction. And then if it changes the sign, when, when you just flip the magnetization direction. So then this is the kind of information theoretically obtained and wanted to do to verify whether we can have this kind of response by experimentally. That's what we did. Then, then, then we performed the spin transfer torque permanent resonance experiment, which was performed by the, my group member, Dr. Kondo, in my Riken team. And he just prepared the bilayer for cell films, which consists of magnesium 3 tin. This is a single crystal slab and then deposited uh, nickel uh, palm oil on top of it. As you know, and if you have just ordinary platinum or tungsten, all this, you see spin hole material, always what you have is in-plane um, oriented uh, spin accumulation, which generated the, the simply only this, you see, Y component spin density uh, torque, and what is classified um, as this uh, in-plane torque and also out-of-plane torque. There are two contributions. Spin, the one is a spin transfer torque. The other one is a field-like torque. Only these two. This uh, equation-wise, and it's uh, rather simple. But if you have a perpendicular component, as I showed, and the situation is different, you have to add this contribution, which modifies this simple relationship and add up in the STT term, the even feel like talk, which also contribute to this, uh, this tau phi. So that means in plane talk. And the outer plane, there is a STT comes in. So by considering this, and we did a fitting, and we've got all this feel like and also spin transfer talk type to different talk contribution. What we found is, uh, spin density, outer plane component, these two, large effective field at the interface, which result in large field-like torque and also spin transfer torque, which is much larger than the other heavy metals, including platinum, tantalum, and tungsten, which reaches up to 80% or so. It's a huge. And even this field-like torque is larger than the STT talk. So that's what we found. And if you are interested in recently, then our results were accepted in this nature communications. That's why then you can find some result in it. Okay, so that means um, we feel that then this type of um, perpendicular component uh, spin density will be uh, very effective to switch the magnetization. Um, by com with respect to it, by comparing with a conventional way. In the case of conventional switching or PMA, you have to break a symmetry. That's why you need to apply a small in-plane field. And then, then you can switch the magnetization at will. But in the case of magnetic routine, since we have already inclined, in, in, inclined spin density, which just exerts a torque on the PMA, and in magnetic moment. Therefore, something like this, and if it's just flip the magnetization, it's a very effectively, and a speed wise, and it's probably a bit faster. Okay, and then, then I'd like to just go to the next topic about the antiferromagnetic domains and walls, and magnet 3X. Uh, we just studied magnet 3 tin and also germanium. Octopole domain dynamics in magnetic 3 tin 
as I said earlier, this octopole behaves like a macroscopic moment, and you can control the direction by external field, something like this. Already, um, this type of idea was studied by the Professor Leon Balin's group in uh, California, uh, UC Santa Barbara. They, pro they just showed this kind of nail type of domain wall could exist at the interface, at the, uh, interface between the two different domains. That's what they numerically calculated at the same time they did first principle electro uh, structure calculation. So we just uh, stimulated by study. This one is a fully numerical study, but we thought, okay, if we align the uh, crystal and then cut the sample out and align this uh, Kagome plane, it's always perpendicular to the current. And we could have a blocko like domain wall. So that one was our starting point, and we did an experiment. But I'd like to just mention similar type of pioneering work was already performed in two different in the United States and also in Europe. And they did and study the surface response and also bulk response by using MOC and the anomalous soil effect. And they found this uh, magnetization process is uh, very complicated. So that's what they want. And the other one is they can use um, laser beam and uh, to generate the temperature gradient across the thickness. So that then you, if you have a domain structure, you can just map out in this way, even though you can record by shining by using laser. Okay, in our case, we started by doing atomistic micromagnetic simulation. We just put the values for exchange interaction, magnetic anisotropy, and also DMI, the Derasinski Moria interaction. And we've got ah. um, results, something like this. Ah, yes. So, oh, sorry. Somebody, yes. Well, somebody was speaking, I muted it. You continue. Right. Okay. So, it's nothing to do with my talk. Is this a question? Or? No, no, it, it was um, somebody accidentally turned on his microphone. Oh, okay, I that's have... fine. Okay, let me continue. Okay, so the boundary condition, but putting uh, one side is upwards and a macroscopic, this octopole, cross time analytic octopole moment, and the other one is a uh, down. But in order to simplify the domain structure, and then we just put this uh, kind of tape out, you see, structure, wedge shape. So, what we have found is uh, the main wall is nicely confined in between the two boundary conditions. The lengthwise then is quite large. Uh, the main wall width is, was something like 1.8 micron or so. And then you can see this kind of stepwise rotation of octopoles. This octopole antiferromagnetic domain, which can be classified in this direction, which sandwiches 60 degree domain wall. So that's what we found. And then based on this knowledge, then we did an experiment, exactly the same type of sample. You see this one is a normal soil effect bar. And we put the pulse current to generate domain wall, something like this, and then put the horizontal current pulse and to drive uh, the main wall like this. Hopefully, if we can just succeed to drive the main wall, and we should see the response, so it's quite different response in this, uh, this part as an anomalous soul signal. So this is a condition and a sequence. But uh, important, importantly, we had to apply the very small H60 L set a bias field perpendicularly. Okay, then what we can see, and then we did an attempt, and also duration, uh, changing the duration, and certainly uh, by changing the current density. And if you just ex um, have the reasonably large uh, current density, and suddenly you can see this, uh, this is a big jump, and then the magnetization reversal takes place, and if it reaches the main wall, it reaches here. But the important thing is, and what I would like to say, then you may ask why this, this domain wall doesn't move, you see, together. But this right-hand side seems to be strongly pinned because of this strange shape. And this one is just only goes across the, uh, along the wire. So that's what we observed. And then when we did this uh, systematically by changing the pulse duration, 
And then we just calculated the bulge, uh, velocity of the domain wall um, by using this separation and Paris duration. It's a very simple conventional way. But when we did this experiment, the bad news is that we didn't see so much polarity dependence. So either positive current or negative current doesn't show such a big difference. And then we just uh, decided, okay, this is uh, like a creep regime. And then we just calculated the base and then we subtracted and we extracted the current polarity contribution. We see this uh, black point and then this open circle point. You see that we did very simple fitting by taking exactly on um, this, which can be applied to the ferromagnet. And then we just uh, set this um, beta term, this uh, non adiabatic term, and also adiabatic term. And if it shows something when we choose about one or two, and we see that we can see the same tendency of the, this uh, polarity dependent. And the value is very small. You see, the speed is not that far, fast. But this one, as you can see, the current density is the 10 to the ninth ampere per meter squared. If we just take the typically 10 to the 12s, and which becomes 50 or so, and which is, I think, matches to the ferromagnet, um, you see, the uh, domain wall velocity. So then this was in creep regime, and then we got into something of 50 meter, 50 meter per second. More recently than we did, um, the, the, the not exactly magnetic 13, magnetic 3 germanium, but we found the, with this uh, current density, 10 to the 11th ampere per meter squared, and the, the speed was reaching to the thousand meter per second. And you remember that in 10 to the 11th, and if we just increase the, up to the 10 to the 12th, and we, we can expect, you see, 10, 10, 10 kilometer, 10 kilometer per second, which is uh, high enough expected for the antiferromagnet. So then uh, secondly, then we, I would like to show you some magnetic three germanium results. Okay, the Mock experiment is very, very uh, strong and a strong method efficient method to, to observe the dynamics. We started to do these things, simulated by my colleagues study. What we can do, and then we prepared, uh, my colleague prepared a um, very, very beautiful uh, single crystal. And this one, as you can see, this is the 200 micron. This one is about um, one millimeter or so. So and this one length is also a few millimeters. And this sample, a surface condition is very, very beautiful. And then if you just observe the MOOC, and you can just measure the hysteretic behavior of the surface and bulk as well by using a normal soul effect simultaneously. And switching field of this octopole moment is um, very low. So that means that this sample is a very, very clean system. And then what we did was, and we observed exactly this yellow region by Monk, and then you can see very interesting. And this actually, and this work by done by uh, my PhD course student, Chinese student, who is a very hard worker, and he succeeded in observing like this. See, you can see the new creation, and also the domain, reverse domain, or I would say octopole domain, is expanding. So, you see, and that's uh, what we observed. And also, the, if you take a snapshot, very interesting thing is, you see, for example, like this shape, and then the crystallographic orientation is like this. And we have always octopole uh, Kagome plane in perpendicular to this axis. So that means this one must be block-like wall. And then this one is uh, in plane rotation is dominating. So that this is like a nail wall, if we just, you see, consider the ferromagnet uh, case, ferromagnet. And then this domain wall also, then we did the atomistic calculation in collaboration with Professor Nakatani, and which showed this kind of stair, stepwise change. Again, 60 degree domain wall takes place in this system. And also another thing is the domain wall energy is very small and which is, equivalent, it's a very, very similar energy. 
You see, as you know, very importantly, these kind of Bloch and the Nailwolves don't coexist in the paramagnet because the magnet is static energy. But in this case, you can see the both domain wall coexist inside this antiferromagnet. So that is a very interesting thing. That's why then usually you can enucleate both domain walls. So that is a finding. And also then if you look at the snapshot, time evolution, a field evolution, and we can just plot from this grayscale how much you see uh, octopole moment rotation takes place in this surface region. Actually, um, this one is gradually rotating and it's the uh, opposite direction, pi. That's what we can see in this analysis. And if it takes place in the very, very small magnetic field range. Okay, and then there are very, um, we like to just say again, coming back, and then this type, this this one is a block-like wall, and if it shows this type of uh, structure, and this one is experimentally, and we can plot and we can just see this type of nail-like uh, structure. Octopole is gradually rotating, and also then we can see this kind of tilted uh, domain wall, and if it means then we have this both coexist, probably this kind of zigzag, broch nail, broch nail, and um, this kind of structure could take place in this type of uh, system. So that's what we found. And then I'd like to just conclude my talk. We just say first part, and I talked about the novel magnetic spin hole effect, non collinear from antimagnetic routine, which shows a typical uh, time reversal symmetry broken type of behavior. And then we can expect and we can easily uh, switch the magnetization of um, pump PMA if we just make uh, this kind of device with using this uh, system. Secondly, then we showed anti domain evolution in non-collinear antiparamagnets, magnet 3X, that means magnet 3 tin and also germanium. And we just experimentally showed this uh, speed in creep regime is about 50 meter per second, which matches to the ferromagnet. And also this one is a Bruch-like. And recent, I just, this is a comment. Now recently then we have performed uh, both, both Bruch, Bruch type or also nail, nail type wall. And um, actually nail type wall shows much, much faster. And if we just confine the domain wall, then we can reach uh, the speed of something like 10,000 meter. 10,000 meter per second or so. Then I'd like to just uh, tell you um, this as a summary and also perspective, this topological anti magnet, and it's uh, very characterized by topology in the momentum space, electronic structure, and also this uh, dissymmetry uh, multiple oct plus a octopole in spin, spin wise. And that's create a very interesting, you see, response one functional magnet, anomalous hole effect, also magnetic spin hole effect, and also topological spintronics. This one is a kind of itself shows a different response. When you can also manipulate the spin structure by based on the cluster magnetic octopole. So that's what I'd like to just say. Then maybe we can just make a non-volatile memory like things so with using this material. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much for this excellent uh, talk. So uh, I request you to uh, stop sharing and mm -hmm. uh, I request everyone to switch on their camera and uh, we can take a screenshot now, a few screenshots, okay. Uh, can somebody take things start? Somehow my keyboard has stopped working. Um, Uspendra, can you take it?
So I'm trying to take. Okay. Sam, maybe. Maybe Kitty, you can take few. Okay, done. Yes, it did. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Now you may kindly turn off the camera and I request uh, Professor Tani to share the screen. Oh, share the screen again? Yeah, because uh, there may be some yeah, questions yeah. which we right. need your screen. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it was a wonderful talk. Thank you so much uh, for this You're excellent welcome. talk. Been really uh, great things. I really thoroughly enjoyed. I'm sure everybody has enjoyed. So now the talk is open for questions. So uh, do we have any questions? Uh, not yet. So maybe I can begin with. I'm very uh, excited to see these uh, domain images of uh, MNC Germany. So because this is an anti ferromagnet and you have done the magnet optic core effect imaging. I always thought that for anti ferromagnet it's very difficult because it's only for ferromagnet. So what technicalities uh, you did so that you could see the anti ferromagnetic domains also? So then you can basically that because of time reversal symmetry is broken. So then you can you in principle you see if you can see the anomalous hole effect then you should see this uh, MOOC response. Okay. So that's why then it is a uh, kind of important key feature is, as I said, the time reversal symmetry was broken in this case. That's why then we can naturally, we can expect. Wow. So that's nice. So I mean, then if you take to like a synchrotron for very uh, close lookup of the walls and all that. So you, you just can perform the XMCD. You don't need the XMLD. Yeah, maybe and then I have to just find it. And for example, manganese site, and whether you see the this, this that's what you have to look at, probably. Okay. But and, this, uh, you can you, you see because I'm not sure whether you can see uh, in the in terms of octopole. Okay, and uh, CD probably then you can access to the each manganese moment, yes. a contribution and s contribution. But yeah. it doesn't mean that you, know, you can just observe. But in the case of chi effect, because anomalous solar effect exists, that means conductance tensor and then has this, uh, you see, off diagonal term. And then the important thing is this of conductance as a function of frequency. So then that is if you do look at this uh, low energy excitation, so that's, we can be sure that then you know, we can have this uh, chi effect. So that okay. we can see. If there is a sort of similarity to the, you see, X ray dichroism, maybe you can see it. Yeah. So do you expect to see such kind of domains for other uh, antiferromagnets in the same family, like manganese thin or manganese uh, gallium also, which are under the same family? Yeah, yeah, of course. And you can expect and if you have the same uh, Kagome lattice, uh, same crystal structure. But the important thing is this uh, time reversal symmetry. I mean, recently there are a lot of studies and particularly, um, for example, Hilo uh, Sinova and also Thomas Jungers, and they are pro you see, proposing this uh, alter magnetism. And yeah. then if this uh, alternating um, spin structure, uh, crystal structure, and then it also shows time reversal symmetry was broken and you can expect a large response. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. You yeah, there are lots of things that need to be studied. Yeah, so the antiferromagnets are kind of behaving in a way uh, mm -hmm. to the ferromagnets, uh, but still keeping the high frequency applications because they are still in uh, terahertz regime if, if you want to see the dynamics. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So there is okay. another question, uh, like a question related to magnetic retain. Yeah. Uh, yes. This STFMR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, please ask, Pranav. 
hello, uh, Professor hello. Otani. Very good talk. Uh, I had a question related to this uh, MN310 STFMR uh, measurements, mm -hmm. where you saw very large uh, feed like torque out of 10 feed like torque. Uh, so these samples are single stretch line, I assume, right? Uh, these are MN310. Excuse me, um, could you tell me again? So uh, this large uh, out of plane uh, field like torque in MN13. Yes. Yeah. Uh, these are observed only in the single crystalline sample? I guess so, but then if you have a kind of textured, so-called textured simple, you should see mm -hmm. the similar things. But the, we haven't done um, successfully. And this kind of spectral analysis, I think the Dr. Kondo in my group and then recently done, as I showed you here, right? But the, in the case of um, single crystal, we can see clearly this tilted effect. But then if you have a polycrystalline the texture structure, this tilting contribution will be comp compensated. So that's why then you can only see probably the perpendicular component. Okay. But still because we, we see some, something, uh, this out of plane field like talk in IRMN, which mm -hmm. is polycrystalline. And uh, right. so I was wondering if it's related to this magnetic spinal effect. In yeah, some yeah, way. yeah. If you, if you see the uh, perpendicular response, then there, there might be, yes, uh, I guess so. And it also shows the same dependence that you introduce the copper, it disappears. Mm hmm similar to what you have observed <laughs> right okay that's the that's a good news then <laughs> yeah <laughs> but our samples are not uh, single crystalline so it, uh, right but anyway very... um if you just create the aligned okay texture simple sample something is just uh, aligned to crystallographically aligned to one particular direction uh, we don't know actually the crystallographical directions because uh, the it is showing many peaks in the XRD. So, but then you can just have but there idea. is a clear evidence that it is uh, the XRD data shows that it is MN3 IR mm -hmm. most likely the phage. Um, although that is not what we intend to grow, but it, the XRD data shows that it is uh, growing in that phase. So it is probably the same class of uh, material, but uh, as you said, it's textured. And maybe that is why it is showing this behavior. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Uh, there is a question by our very first year student on Singh. I'm teaching him a uh, very uh, simple question. What makes uh, MN3 germanium or MN3 tin so perfect for this kind of experiment that other related elements don't have. <laughs> so then what kind of experiment that you mean that it's perfect? For example, then in terms of mock experiment, okay, this optical response, in fact, it's not that easy. Surface condition is very, very important. And in this response is very sensitive to the surface condition. Even though, because when we started from the single crystal bulk, and then by using FIB, focused ion beam, we just cut out. And then, and of course, and we, that requires post annealing and things. But as I showed you, and we finally did use the single crystal as it is. The flux method is grown without any microfabrication. The surface was beautiful. So that's what in the very end I showed you. For example, this sample. This is manganese three germanium. You see, this uh, you can see this one is a kind of side view of hexagonal pillar. So this surface is beautiful. And then the without treating surface, you can see this, uh, the, the optical response. But in fact, then this optical response chi effect measurement is not that easy, particularly domain wall observation. 
surface condition has to be well preserved or you have to treat well, otherwise they cannot see it well. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for mm -hmm. answering and is very uh, motivating student. Uh, there is one more question. Uh, thank you for the nice talk. How significant is the presence of the wild cone of the manganese steam in generating the magnetic spin hole effect? Okay. Um, in the case of magnetic spin hole effect, this uh, you see whether you have wild cone or not, it's not doesn't it doesn't matter. More more important is this uh, symmetry with uh, magnetization and also the your you see as I showed you in the very earlier, but in principle, then you should see in the ferromagnet as well. So that's what I want to say. Because in peculiar microscopic, microscopic um, electric structure, electronic structure is not playing so importantly in terms of magnetic spin hole effect. Um, okay, um, I have one question. So the domain images are just like a single crystal or these are thin films of uh, MN3 Germany? This one is a, uh, just a, this, this one is a bulk um, the this sample, okay. okay. The magnet three germanium, magnet three tin, is a kind of thin slab. I would say, by using uh, FIB, we can just thinning down, and then we did measure. But that one is not the magnet optical measurement, but we use an all the electrical measurement by using uh, longitudinal magnet resistance and also the anomalous soul effect measurement. And you expect uh, this kind of effect to be there also for the thin films? Let's say to yes, get Yes, we expect okay. exactly, yeah, in the case of thin film as well. If you can make a very high quality epitaxial film, that's what we okay. are working at the moment. My colleague, uh, Professor Nakatsuzi Group, and you know, they have been working on, and recently they are really uh, making. And if you just uh, Google the recently, then we can just make the bilayer film. You see, consisting of manganese three tin and also platinum, and we can switch magnetization by using SOT. Okay. And also the uh, more you see, that's a very important um, work. And also the there is um, this um, um, the the journal called the small, and they improved the kind of quality efficiency and also how much you can switch. At the moment, in the Nature paper, we reported something like only thirty percent. Of the total volume can switch by using uh, spin orbit torque. But recently, more recently, then we can find uh, differently. And that's, the, that's what we are submitted. We have submitted, and then we are just under review. I don't, uh, I cannot show you, and also I don't have my data yet. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, we have so, to yeah, so, so please wait and then. Probably then, if you're interested in this nature paper or this uh, paper in appeared in small this this year, probably then you can get some information. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any last question? You, uh, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I request you to stop sharing. I think very interactive discussions. Now I like to share my screen to present a small token of appreciation for our team. W2S, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. So I will read it for you. So it's a great pleasure to present this digital plaque, but we really hope and look forward that you can visit our institute in India. Physically, we can interact. I can show you around. It will be a real pleasure. Until that, uh, we have to still work with these online seminar conferences. So W2S seminar webinar series on Spintronics, NICER, Bhubaneswar, India. Next pleasure in presenting this plaque to Professor Shishika Otani uh, from University of Tokyo, Japan, uh, the famously known Deacon Lab. Uh, in the cognition and appreciation from a very valuable speaker to give a lecture on functional topological chiral antiferromagnet. So on behalf of everyone, I really clap. Thank you so much for your excellent talk. It was a real pleasure to have you on board. And uh, I hope you can join at our groups are always welcome to join. I will share the information with you. Next week, we will have talk by Professor Paolo Bhavasuri. That would be the last lecture of this uh, year. And then we will start again on 13th of January 
with the lecture by Professor Ramuti Ramesh from uh, UC Berkeley. And then we continue hopefully <laughs> next year onwards. Okay. So I think uh, it was really enjoyable talk. Thank you so much again, Professor Tani. It was really- Thank you very pleasure. much for invitation. Yes, thank you so much all of the audience. It was great to have you. See you next week, same time. And uh, please be safe, take care, and thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Yes, take care.